Hey all my book lovers, and today we're going to be discussing how funny romance novels are. Or more like how funny certain people seem to think they are, just to mention. This may be a bit of a rant, so prepare yourself. Do it by the book, no, I do my own thing. That's why every single hook got them singing like me. And I ain't in any rush, cause I'm finally getting paid. Don't believe in any luck, I believe I'm self made, yeah. Alright, so. This has been coming up a lot more. Obviously, because, you know, Valentine's Day is when everybody decides to get behind their screen, get behind their keyboard and start hating on romance and romance novels. It's really cliche. Oh, and most of them are saying how cliche romance novels are. You know, all those romance novels with the guy who sweeps the woman in the long skirts off her feet and throws her on the back of the horse. I mean, I haven't read a romance novel like that in, I don't know, since I was nine. And I've read tons and tons and tons, so I don't know where they're finding this book, but maybe they're going back quite a bit, or I don't know. More likely, they're going by what they've heard because they've never actually picked up a romance novel. I mean, just imagine that, writing a whole article when you have no clue what you're talking about. But it's a common thing. And I've I'm always curious, what, what purpose does this serve? What are they accomplishing by bashing romance? Well, it's just not my thing. Well, what's your thing? Well, I really like action, and I really like when there's a good plot, and there's great characterizations, and, you know, a, a great story. But you hate all romance novels. Yes, romance sucks. Most Good romance novels, and I, I even dare to say most romance novels that are on shelves today, you will pick them up and they will have all the things that readers of any genre love. You've got romance novels that cover every single genre that there is. You've got horror romance, you've got science fiction romance, sports romance, motorcycle uh, romance. You've got historical romance, which, yeah, that has some more of the horses involved, but, um, okay, that sounded disturbing, but I mean the, the grabbing the woman and throwing her on the back of the horse, not anything weird with horses, but you, you've got so many different kinds of romance novels that these sweeping statements of what romance novels are often come from a very uneducated place and it's it's frustrating to hear but it's also kind of you almost have to look at these people like children saying that they don't like foods that they might never have tried you know you put uh, some vegetables on a kid's plate and you've got it covered in you know melted cheese and, you know, a kid right away goes, oh my god, that's broccoli. I'm not touching the broccoli. Okay, but do you want to try a bite? No. No, I'm not touching it. It's, it's so gross. Okay. And then a few years later, all of a sudden, your kid tries it at some restaurant. And is like, oh my god, mom, why don't you ever make that? Never mind. It it's the same exact thing, only these are adults and they will hang on to these ideas forever. They're not going to try that new thing because it's so much more fun just to complain about it, just to judge it and judge the people who read it and okay, but don't be surprised when we just shake our heads and kind of snicker at you behind your back because we know that you're just following the trend that you complain about so much. It's popular and it's edgy to bitch about romance and say that you read only the literary stuff. Sure you do. 
I guarantee you, some of these people, if they picked up these books, they would be bored out of their minds. They just want to be all pretentious and, okay, it's not impressing anybody because intelligent people that know what they're talking about are listening to you go on and on and on and they're like, you sound silly. You sound completely out of your league. Maybe just shut up and listen to someone else. I don't know. Probably not the nicest thing of me to say, but seriously, I think a lot of times some people just need to shut up. Just shut up. Just shut up and listen. Listen to the other people saying, you know what, there's this kind of book and I, you know, I read it and I related to it a lot and it was empowering and it gave me a place to escape. It gave me that emotion and that connection that I need. There's a whole community that I was able to find my place with those people. And this isn't one type of person who is connecting to others through romance novels. These are umpteen different kinds of people finding someone to relate to. And yes, a lot of them are women. And it's quite obvious that sometimes that's what's threatening about it, is that it's women and it's sex. And it's women enjoying sex and they don't need men to do it. Yeah, that's scary, isn't it? I mean, a woman just saying, I got my romance novel, I got my vibrator, I don't need no man. That's, that's scary to, I don't know, some people. We don't care. We're not worried about what you think. And I think more, because you see some readers who absolutely love romance, who feel like they need to hide it away, who feel kind of ashamed that they're reading those kind of books. And now that is upsetting. This has always been a way for women to own their sexuality, to own their own right to speak, to own their own right to have a voice. And the idea of women being ashamed and afraid to do this, now that's disturbing. And people who bitch about romance, they're usually the ones feeding into that. And they might not be doing it for the same reasons. They might not be doing it thinking that, you know, Women should not be reading. They should be... That, that sounds familiar, isn't it? That's not what you want to sound like. And a lot of the time, when you bitch about romance, that's exactly what you sound like. These books for women are somehow less. You hear things like, so, you enjoy those sex books? Or, ooh, I don't read smut. Or mommy porn. I'm not into, you know, all those dirty books. Dirty books? So anything that involves sex is automatically dirty? I mean, you know, you can have dirty sex. Yeah, it's kind of fun. But if you're looking at sex and automatically thinking, oh, the very idea of talking about it is dirty, that's, that's a little concerning. And I think that people need to think about that. Women who can openly talk about reading and about sex can be silenced by shame. And I think more women need to be aware of this. That as they're being talked down to, as people are you know, judging what they think and what they read, and who they relate to, you don't have to listen to them. You have heroines in your books that you look up to for a reason. Can you imagine these heroines being like, oh my god, this person's judging what I should what I read. I should hide it. I should I should be ashamed. I should pretend to read all these other acclaimed novels that everybody else is pretending to read. Yeah. Don't bother. Don't bother because these people who are judging you, they don't matter. They're standing in place and you're not. And that's a pretty powerful place to be. 
in the media and and this is actually quite disturbing because the media whether you agree with journalists and reporters or not one fact remains is the media has a lot of say in public opinion of things and when the media makes a point of mocking romance novels romance authors just the cover of a romance book being put up on Instagram or being put up on screen during a newscast is enough for mocking is enough to draw laughter as if just the idea of a romance novel is funny that if that doesn't disturb other people I don't know what to say I find that really messed up and it pisses me off every time I see it I see other romance authors having to deal with this public shaming all the time and that shouldn't be happening we're we should be beyond that unfortunately we're not so I think people need to be speaking up a bit more rather than just going along with the laughter going along with the oh yeah romance novel see he he no, I wouldn't ever read those. I just have one by my bed that's, you know, falling apart because I've read it so often. But I don't want to tell anybody that. You should tell everybody. You should be loud and proud about what you read because you're reading, which puts you ahead of so many people. Whether you're reading romance or anything else. And the funny thing is, like I mentioned before, when you're reading romance, you're not just reading one thing. That There's so many different stories. There's stories that cover love and loss and pain and fighting against the odds to reach your goals. It's not just about the romance. But the romance and sex, that's not a part of it that you should feel the need to remove to make it a better story. It, it's funny because... Um, Stephen King, who I really respect, he was in a, quoted in an article recently saying that, um, I'm going to put the quote up here, but um, no one's good at writing sex. No one's good at writing sex. Um, I, I don't think you're talking to the right people. I know you're not very good at writing sex. Congratulations on the worst sex scene award. That was that's quite the accomplishment. And after that accomplishment, you're definitely qualified to judge every single fiction book out there and say, yeah, nobody can do this properly. We can. And we are. Maybe take a minute to learn from us because we know what we're doing. And our sex scenes don't involve children. Just say, someone who writes sex scenes that are either horrific or disturbing, you know what? They fit in your story, and I'm not judging. But dismissing an entire genre in an article that's about writing sex, I, just seeing that, it blew my mind. I'm actually going to include a link to that article in the description down there so that you could check it out for yourself but I was I was stunned they literally managed to have a whole article talking about writing sex and they didn't speak to a single romance author they spoke to horror authors and literary authors one of them uh, part of it that I found really funny was this one author he had read a book uh, that had gay sex scenes in it and he was like I wonder if you know um, hetero scenes can be just as sexy no heterosexuals don't have you know as good sex as queer people sorry you guys can keep trying but no I'm nobody take offense I'm not actually saying that I just I thought that was funny there were so many straight authors writing that all the time and and we're stunned straight people are having like hot sex yeah, straight people gay people single people all by themselves and you know they're really really awesome vibrators I mean you should you should look into it get into this day and age where sex is happening and it's hot 
and it's on pages of books and on screens of e-readers. I mean, it might, it might shock you because I, you're so isolated that you weren't aware that this was a thing with the biggest genre in the world? Come on. Can journalists and reporters please you know, do a little bit of work figuring out what they're talking about before they open their mouths about romance novels? Just a thought. I mean, it might take a bit of an effort, but it'll be totally worth it because you'll read a book and you won't sound stupid. Just, you know, a little bit of advice. I wish these articles and these reporters and these journalists that are talking about this would take just a little bit of time so they sounded like they knew what they were talking about, so that they sounded a little educated on the subject. I mean, since when did it become uh, such a thing to, to rush out articles or news reports and be too lazy to actually do your homework? Is, is that the thing now? Because I think that needs to change. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Okay, it was a rant. This entire video was a rant, and I'm sorry. Um, I've just been thinking about this a lot, and I know that there's a lot of authors and readers out there, and I happen to be both, who are tired of it. We're tired of the lazy ass jokes. We're tired of the same old articles coming out every freaking year. Find something new to do. Or if you want to talk about romance novels, actually do it in a way that makes sense. Do it in a way that actually represents what's out there. Because as of now, I have a feeling you have no fucking clue. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you'd like to hear me complain about anything else, let me know in the comments what you thought. I also have links to my free books as well as some other interesting links down there in the description. Feel free to comment. Let me know what you think about this topic. If you've seen some of these articles and they annoy you as much as they annoy me. And I'm forgetting something. Oh yeah, like, subscribe, ring that little bell, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.